Yeah, I'm going back to where I was before I was rudely interrupted by the Minister. Um, and the minister, the, minister has some, the minister has some issues, I might say, with the fact that the Labour Party has chosen to take the arts so seriously that we have our fantastic spokesperson in Jacinda Ardern and two associate spokespeople, and, I, and, and Darian Fenton. Oh. And I have, to tell, I have to tell the Minister that we took this decision carefully because we needed three spokespeople to match his three different personalities. So that was why we did it. It, just so, just, and we, we know we can't quite cover all of the all of them, but that's why uh, we've done that. When I was speaking earlier on, uh, Mr. Chair, I was speaking about the change that has happened, as the minister notes, under clause 10, um, and I was talking in, at that point about the Pacific Arts Committee. And the minister gets up and says, "Isn't it fantastic? There's going to be now two people." on the Arts Council who are going to be representing the Pacifica communities. What he fails to sell uh, the House is that currently the Pacific Arts Committee has seven people on it. It has seven people on it. And that enables the Pacific Arts Committee to reflect the diverse nature of the Pacifica community in New Zealand. So we now move to a situation where there will be two people who will be put in the position of having to do that. And in their submission to the Select Committee, which was a very long time ago, so the Minister may not recall this, the Human Rights Commission actually raised this as a concern. And they said that they were concerned that it would be a loss of effective advice from the broad range of people who are part of the Pacific Arts Committee. So Clause 10 R5, which the Minister is terribly proud of, has been changed in a useful way by the Select Committee to acknowledge uh, the importance of having people who understand not only Pacific Arts, but the traditions and cultures of Pacifica uh, community. So that change was made by the committee. What I would be suggesting to the Minister is that he does run the risk with these changes of losing that representation of the diverse range of Pacific cultures. Uh, the same applies too to, um, to Wakatoi, because yes, it is true that there are now going to be four people on the Arts Council who need a knowledge of Te Ao Māori and Tikanga Māori, but the reality is Te Wakatoi currently has seven members on it. So it also has seven members who are now will be reduced down to having four within this uh, wider organisation. And again, the Human Rights Commission said, speaking specifically to Clause 10, that they were concerned about the loss of distinctive identities and practices of Te Wakatoa. And that was the same concern that we got when we spoke to community arts organisations around New Zealand. The reality is there may well be some structural changes to Creative New Zealand and to the Arts Council that would be useful. But what we have been failed to be convinced by is the government who have taken three years to get this bill back into the House to actually come forward and say, this is how we're going to make sure that Māori arts and Pacific arts in New Zealand continue to be promoted. There were suggestions made during the Select Committee process by the Human Rights Commission and by other groups about how it would be possible within the structure that the Minister is proposing uh, for there to be that specific recognition of the diversity and identities, and unfortunately that has not been taken up by the Minister. So Clause 10 of the Bill, uh, Mr Chair, we don't believe does continue to provide the kind of uh, recognition of New Zealand's diversity that we would like to see. And the Minister has justified a lot of this change around reducing bureaucracy. Well, if the Minister wanted to do one thing to reduce bureaucracy within the arts sector, it would be to take a look at the, the application forms that are required by Creative New Zealand. 35-odd pages of repetitious content required every year by arts practitioners right around the country. Or if he wanted to talk about reducing the bureaucracy and improving the operations of Creative New Zealand, he could actually start thinking about how do we get funding into the regions. Because if we actually look at the submissions that came to this bill in 2010, a number of them came from regional arts organisations who were calling out for an arts council that had some representation from the provinces and the regions. That's not guaranteed within this bill. And those regional and community arts organisations were essentially saying, Creative New Zealand's not listening to us anymore, it's not in touch with our communities. So if the Minister really wanted to reduce bureaucracy and get money out to the regions so that centralising it in the way that he has. But instead, the best he can do, Mr Chair, is come to us with his committee of 13 and say that that is the way 
that we should um, turbocharge the arts in New Zealand. I would love to be standing here today debating a bill that had a vision for the future of arts in New Zealand, and we would be able to support a bill like that. But unfortunately, Mr Chair, this bill does not provide that. It merely limits the participation of communities like Māori and Pacifica. Well, Catherine Delahunty. Thanks very much, Mr Chair. Tēnā koutou katoa. Um, I enjoyed being part of the bill at the beginning, and then Holly Walker took over, and so I missed the select committee, so I'm really sorry that I wasn't present for the submissions. Um, but now I'm back because Holly Walker's...